If eating out at restaurants has become cost prohibitive for you due to the rising inflation on dining out in restaurants, this is the video for you. Today, I'm going to share with you three awesome copycat meals from your favorite restaurants that you can make into freezer meals for way cheaper at home. First up is the pasta e fagioli soup from Olive Garden. This one was really good and my kids actually loved it. Next up is Panda Express. Uh, my family actually really likes Panda Express, but it can get pretty pricey and you never know exactly what the quality of the food is going to be. So I'm going to share with you how to make this delicious chicken teriyaki into a freezer meal. You're going to love it if you love Panda Express's version. And then last but not least is Cafe Rio. We are going to make some copycat Cafe Rio shredded chicken. I served this with a rice bowl with some salad, and I'm also going to share with you how to make some of their copycat dressing. So let's get started. Okay, so if you like the teriyaki chicken from Panda Express, I'm gonna show you a copycat. So I've got in my freezer bag here six boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I'm gonna add in just a couple tablespoons of light oil, and then I'm gonna season this with salt and pepper. Okay, so I've got my chicken thighs in here seasoned with oil, salt, and pepper. We're actually going to freeze the sauce separately because this basically, this chicken gets grilled and then the teriyaki sauce gets brushed on it. And if we marinate the chicken in the teriyaki sauce, I think that it's got too high of a sugar content um, that it'll burn. So for the sauce in this uh, measuring cup, I've got some water. I'm gonna add some ground ginger and ground garlic powder and then some soy sauce. I'm also gonna add some sugar-free sweetener. And then I'm gonna squeeze in the juice of one lemon. I'm just squeezing it upside down so the seeds don't go in there. And we'll just give this a whisk until everything is combined. Okay, so we've got our chicken. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the teriyaki sauce into one of these little one cup prep containers. And then I'll just freeze this with the chicken. I'll make sure I label both of them because Always make sure you label everything or you won't remember what's in there. And then when it's time to cook, I'll show you guys how we put it together. Personally, I like to wash and strain my rice prior to cooking it because it decreases some of the starch on the rice and in my opinion, leads to a fluffier rice. So I'm gonna make my rice in the Instant Pot. I have some uh, jasmine rice, about three cups of that. And I'm just gonna cook it in the Instant Pot I don't measure the water, I just kind of fill it up until it's about half an inch above the rice. And I did put some salt in there as well. And then I'll just use the regular rice function. Okay, so this is the um, teriyaki sauce that I made and obviously froze and thawed out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into this saucepan and heat it up. You can kind of hear the sugar chunks in there and then I'm gonna mix together a little bit of cornstarch and water and we'll thicken this up. To cook my chicken thighs, I just heated up some oil in a pan and I'm just sauteing these on either side until they are light brown and cooked through. I went ahead and added some cornstarch mixed with a little water to my teriyaki sauce. And once those are partially cooked, um, the chicken thighs, you just wanna brush that sauce over them and flip them a few times. You can add as much or as little sauce as you like, depending on how sweet you like it. But this is so that obviously if you were to cook the chicken in the teriyaki sauce, it would stick and burn to the pan. So my rice turned out perfectly and I just served this teriyaki chicken with a scoop of rice and then I steamed some broccoli on the side. I love getting the steam in the bag frozen broccoli from Costco. It makes a super quick veggie side. This recipe is definitely delicious and family friendly. So I'm really excited to show you this next recipe. It is a copycat Cafe Rio shredded chicken. Now, I don't have a Cafe Rio near me, so this is why I love copycat recipes because it's super accessible for anyone to make, regardless if you have one of these restaurants near you or not. So I'm adding some chicken breast to the bag here. Um, I've got six like really, really small, I would say like four ounce chicken breasts. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those. And then I've got some zesty Italian dressing. I'm gonna go ahead and use half a cup of that. I just went ahead and got one of these small bottles cause I wasn't sure how much I would use after the fact on my 
actual salads. We're gonna add two teaspoons of chili powder, one teaspoon of cumin. We need three cloves of garlic. I'm just gonna go ahead and use three teaspoons of this pre-minced garlic. And then one packet of ranch dip. So this is what I have on hand. It's actually a green onion dip mix, but um, obviously it's very similar to ranch. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that up since it's what I have on hand. Now this has obviously quite a bit of salt in it. So we're not gonna add any salt to this. It's very simple, just the dressing, the ranch mix, the seasonings, and the garlic. And then lastly, a half a cup of water. So you can see how simple this is. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up just so the seasonings are well distributed. Put the label on it, stick it in the freezer, and then when it's time to cook this for dinner, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so I've got my uh, Cafe Rio chicken, shredded chicken here that I've thawed out, and I'm gonna go ahead and dump everything into the crock pot. So you can also cook this in the Instant Pot, but since I have time today, I'm gonna go ahead and cook it in the crock pot. Um, I'm gonna put this on low, because I have about six, seven hours till dinner. So this one has, a, this particular crock pot has um, low for eight hours or 10 hours. So I'm just gonna set it to eight hours. It'll probably be done before that. So I'll go ahead and check it. Um, but when this is done, obviously we'll shred it up and I'll show you how we're gonna serve it. It's obviously very versatile. You could do burritos, burrito bowls, tacos, taco salads, um, anything that you'd like really. All right, so at Cafe Rio, they have a tomatillo ranch dressing and we're gonna make a copycat of that. So I have my food processor here. You could also use a blender if you wanted to. I'm gonna add in one cup of mayo. You could also use uh, low fat mayo if you wanted to. And then we're gonna add one cup of buttermilk. The recipe calls for uh, fresh tomatillos. I could not find those at my store. I'm wondering if they're out of season, obviously. So I got some tomatillo salsa. Um, I'm probably gonna use, I'm just gonna estimate about a third of a cup of that, and that'll give that same tomatillo flavor to the dressing. We're gonna add one packet of ranch dressing mix. All right, I'm gonna ha add the juice of half a lime, um, a teaspoon of minced garlic, and then half a bunch of cilantro. You can go ahead and add the stem since it's all gonna be blended up. This is one jalapeno that I just kind of cubed up. I'm gonna leave the seeds out, but if you want it to be spicier, you can leave the seeds in. And then that's it. I'm just gonna go ahead and process this until everything is smooth, and then we'll give it a taste and see if it needs any more seasoning. Okay, so I gave this a taste and it tastes perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and put this into a container and then I'll put it in the fridge. It needs to thicken up a little bit. It's quite thin right now, so it'll thicken up as it sits in the fridge. Once the chicken was done, I just went ahead and shredded it right in the slow cooker. Um, that's normally what I try to do unless there's any fat that needs to be removed, which obviously there's not in this particular dish. Um, you can tell when your chicken is done if it shreds easily and if it falls apart really easily. Um, um, if it doesn't quite fall apart yet, then it probably needs to cook a little bit longer for that protein to break down. But here is how I served uh, my serving of the Cafe Rio shredded chicken. Uh, I refrigerated that tomatillo dressing for a while, which really turned out good. I highly recommend making that. I always love sauces when I'm making bowls and tacos and things like that. But I just served it with a little bit of shredded cheese and with some rice. And my kids actually ate this in a quesadilla. So it kind of did a uh, double duty for us. Okay, so we are going to make some pasta e fagioli soup. And this is actually an Olive Garden copycat recipe. So I've got my freezer bag ready here. This recipe calls for a pound of ground beef. And what I like to do is I like to cook mine ahead of time. Um, cook it and crumble it and drain it. And then that way I have it for use in recipes. There are a lot of freezer meals where you can actually put the ground beef in raw, but I definitely prefer to cook mine ahead of time. That's obviously just a personal preference. Typically one pound of ground cooked ground beef is approximately two cups. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and add to my bag. And then next I'm gonna go ahead and add my chopped veggies. So I have one onion that I diced up, carrots that I peeled and chopped, and then two stalks of celery that I peeled and chopped as well. Okay, so we've got our veggies in there. I'm going to add one 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes. Don't drain them. 
and then also a can of dark red kidney beans. I did uh, rinse and drain these and I just put them back in the can so it would be easy to add. And then I also have one can of rinsed and drained white beans or cannellini beans, so we're gonna add those. One uh, jar of spaghetti sauce. This is a 24 ounce jar. You can use any brand that you like. And then in this bowl, I have some dried oregano, dried parsley, some salt and pepper. We're gonna go ahead and add that. And then when you cook this, you will be adding some beef broth or you could probably use chicken broth as well. Um, and then at the end, some dry pasta. You can use usually ditalini or sometimes orzo if you want to. So here is our completed freezer meal. I just like to mix these up a little bit just to kind of make sure that the spices are all mixed together and then we will label it and pop it in the freezer. All right, so I did make this pasta e fagioli soup for dinner one night. Once uh, everything was thawed out in the freezer bag, I just added it to my slow cooker. And then I went ahead and used the broth to kind of rinse out the freezer bag so that I made sure I got everything in there. Go ahead and stir this up, put the lid on, and this will cook. You can cook it on low for three to four hours or high, or I'm sorry, high for three to four hours or low for six to seven hours. Um, basically, you just want the veggies to get tender and the beef to get a little bit tender as well. So once that's done cooking, you're gonna add in one cup of small dry pasta. Um, you could use orzo or really any small pasta, but I really like using the ditalini in this recipe and that's usually what is traditional and what's at Olive Garden. Um, after the pasta sits in the slow cooker for about 30 minutes, it will be cooked through. And I like to add just a few teaspoons of vinegar at the end. It just helps brighten up the flavor, especially when something has been in the slow cooker all day, that little kick of acidity. So definitely recommend that. Just season it to taste. And then I just served this in bowls with some shredded Parmesan on top. And we had some rolls on the side and a salad. My kids loved it. Thanks so much for watching today. And if you're interested in these recipes, you can find out how to join the Freezer Fit membership. We'll have a link in the description box below.